Americans and people worldwide, this will never happen again in our living history. In today's video, I'm just going to speak off the top of my head around facts, figures, numbers, logic, and how show you how this will never happen again in our living history. Americans and people worldwide, we're one of the biggest global financial transformations that we will see in our living history. The things that are about to happen in the next 10 years will be your new financial system for the next 100 years. And there's a small percentage of the population that dis didn't listen to the naysayers, that didn't listen to the FUD, that didn't listen to the bullshit on the media and allocated a little bit of their portfolio into a speculative asset called crypto. And some of these people will be the new 1%. My name is Coach JV. What I work to do is make very complex macro and micro economic strategies very simple so the normal everyday person can implement them. So I have a couple free resources for you guys based on questions. We always provide solutions to those questions. So number one is a free consultation. I'm a licensed insurance agent. I have licensed insurance agents in all 50 states. I teach people how I insure my wealth using insurance. So if you click the description of the video down below, you can set up a free consultation with my team or in my social media platform, you can click the link and you can set up a free consultation, absolutely free. I also wrote a free book that you can download within 15 minutes by putting your email in and that will head into your inbox. Check your jump box as well. On the back end of every video, I share with you exactly what I'm doing and that is the pattern that I do. It's written in the book. All right, so let's dive right into this. So I'm gonna share some facts, figures, numbers, logic, and some dates. So it's very, very important to understand at a very deep level, I say understand here, okay, what is actually happening right now. I know it's super excited in the cryptocurrency markets. Everybody's getting emotional about it. And now crypto's pulling back today. Everybody's freaking out. What's going on, guys? It is going to be extremely, extremely volatile, number one. Number two is people are going to make an extreme amount of wealth in a short amount of time. But if you don't understand the game, you'll get played 100% of the time. Wall Street wins 100% of the time and still you start playing like Wall Street. And when you look this way, there's always another narrative going on this way. So I'm going to back up all the way to 2009. Then I'm going to go to 2012 and I'm going to go through some specific things that are happening right now so we can understand what is happening. But let's back up all the way to 1913. Okay. So in 1913, the Federal Reserve was created on a Jekyll Island, right? So they changed the names of the people. Well, we know if you read the book, The Creature of Jekyll Island, it was a bunch of wealthy bankers that created the Federal Reserve that's not attached to the government. You hear Jerome Powell all the time in this current paradigm say, hey, we're responsible for money supply and job markets. Congress is doing their thing, right? So they try to say that they're not attached, but their policies, they say are what's messing up the financial system. All he can do is control the mess based on their policies, right? So in 1913, the Federal Reserve was created, which was a bunch of wealthy bankers which created a bank for banks. Central banks control the monetary system, the money supply, and the job markets, okay? Since 1913, when the Federal Reserve was created, which is supposed to control the money supply, protect us basically in so many terms, and the money and the job markets to keep us in balance, the dollar has basically collapsed. You can look that up for yourself. Okay, so as we fast forward to 2009, America was coming out of one of the greatest financial collapses in our history, the housing collapse. So worldwide, with America being the dominant currency, this is just my own opinion. Okay, This is just what I believe. I was heading into banking after the collapse, so I got to see the aftermath from the retail banking side of people losing their homes, people filing bankruptcy, people had loans that couldn't even afford it. Didn't make any sense. I was sitting in front of people with million-dollar loans that had no income. They got loans with no income, and worldwide, the population was like, wait a minute. America isn't even regulating their banking system and they're dominating our currency. So every single time America's interest rates go up, it messes up our currency. And every single time they go down, it messes up. There's this wave of energy that America is a dominant currency. So in 2009, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa created BRICS. And BRICS, since that point, has been working to de dollarize from America. But also something interesting happened in 2009. Satoshi Nakamoto on January 2009 created Bitcoin. So all of a sudden, this new currency, this new currency was created. Now, I say that now because Trump now is calling it cryptocurrency. He's calling it a new form of money. You know, uh, all uh, BlackRock is now telling you it's a flight to safety, right? Remember, Jamie Dimon says it's a pet rock, but he has his own cryptocurrency, Onyx. <laughs> he has his own blockchain technology. Okay, so then we fast forward. So Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and ironically, Bitcoin is created at the exact same time. Then we go to 2012, which is a pivotal date. So get out your pen and paper. So 2012, 
we had the end of the Mayan calendar, and I want you guys to comment down below. There was something else that was turned on in Switzerland in 2012. Now, that's a rabbit hole. You can go down, blah, 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 and I'm not even going to get into that. But there was a lot that happened in 2012. The Mayan calendar ended. We thought the world was going to end. But I believe there was a transition into a brave new world, the transition we're going through now. The Mayan calendar ended, and comment down below what happened in Switzerland, okay? I'm not going to give the name of it, Switzerland. And then that supposedly changed some things. Also in 2012, the FOMC was created, the Future Oversight Committee, which was to regulate non-bank financial institutions, and Gary Gensler was part of that committee. You also had uh, Rosie Rios, who's on the board for Ripple, who was told to reduce coin and cash usage in 2012, but she couldn't. And why couldn't she? Because Obama turned the rescue plan on full blast, which turned the printing machine on full blast. So she could not reduce coin and cash usage because of GDP growth. Then we also had the bank bail-in committee created in 2012. Were they preparing for 12 years later, exactly 12 years later, to use the bank bail-in committee, which is different from a bailout committee? A bail-in is where they take, and right now, what are we going through? The smaller banks, which I'm going to break down in just a moment, which ended on March 11th, 2024, the BTFP, which no longer gives banks funding. So we had the Bank Bailing Committee created in 2012, the FOMC Future Oversight Committee to regulate non-bank financial institutions, and Rosie Rios is told to reduce coin and cash usage in 2012. But she said, you need a shock to the system to change consumer behavior. So boom, we hit 2020, and we have a huge shock to the system pandemic, which changed all our consumer behaviors. Now I'm going to fast forward to 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine. And the first thing Biden did, the first thing Biden did was put sanctions on Russia around the SWIFT system. Okay. Since then, <laughs> since then, since America put sanctions on Russia around the SWIFT system and tried to take them off the American financial system or off the financial system at large, BlackRock, the CEO, now says Bitcoin is a flight to safety and says it's good protection if you don't trust your government. Isn't that interesting? In 2017, he said it's used for money laundering, but by 2023, going into 2024, he says it's now a flight to safety, and they're one of the largest holders on long size micro strategies. And he said it's a good currency if you don't, or a store of value if you don't trust your government. Okay. Also, during this time, BRICS has added five nations, five nations to de dollarize from the American dollar. Okay. El Salvador president calls America's Federal Reserve, calls them out to be a Ponzi scheme. They basically say, hey, you print treasury bonds to supply your government, and then you print money to, so it was just like, you got to go watch the video. It was like, it's like a Ponzi scheme, right? He calls us out, and guess what? The El Salvador president holds Bitcoin, and they just made a big move with their Bitcoin as well. Then all of a sudden, Trump becomes bullish on crypto and says it's now a new form of currency. What is going on? They're all changing their narrative. They're all changing their narrative. And then March 11th, this week was a huge, huge thing. The BTFP loan program that was created to bail out banks since the bond yield inverted last year ended. It ended. So they, they told us banks were just fine, but they had this lending program that was propping up the banks. And now that ended. Now, remember, Jerome Powell said to us as well, some banks will collapse and the U.S. Is, debt is unsustainable. And as we sit, I think it was this week, BRICS is now putting sanctions on America. So the reason why I bring all this stuff up to you is not to give you fear or not to scare you, is to say, hey, I'm making some moves in my financial. I'm not running from the U.S. dollar. I don't think the U.S. dollar is going to collapse. It's a dominant currency. But what I do see is, as Trump said seven years ago, that we're heading to an even playing field. We're heading to a new monetary system. I believe that there's going to be a bag of currencies. It's going to be regulated very different, and it's going to move through blockchain technology. Okay, We're going to have money moving to the speed of light, moving from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0, industrial to technical, an analog banking system to a digital move, a digital type of system for banking. And the reason why I'm bullish on technologies like XRP, XLM, Algorand, all these different things that are in the payment space is because everything's going to be tokenized. It's not because I'm a maximalist in XRP or a maximalist in XLM. It's because I understand logic. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me if it goes up or if it goes down. It just matters if it hits my price targets. It also matters to me that I'm pulling profits and allocating into real world assets with diversification. So 
that's some things you want to think about because I know everybody's jumping back into meme coins now and it just blows my mind that people are actually using that as a strategy once again because if you're trying to get rich quick, you're going to get wrecked 100% of the time. Wall Street will win 100% of the time. If you're doing addictive behaviors like trying to chase meme coins and pump and dumps, you're going to lose 100% of the time. Okay, so here's exactly what I'm doing. So I'll share with you guys. You guys know I bring up Merlin every single day. I'm very proud of Merlin. Anything I talk about is a product or service that I've created or I am co-founder or owner of, and I'm part of the creation. So Merlin, I'm the co-founder and one of the creators of Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto. So when I explain exit plans, I use Merlin to alert me of my exit targets, okay? So basically what I'm doing is I'm holding 50% of my portfolio long-term legacy, okay? I'll explain what I'm doing with the 50% after this. 50% <clears throat> I'm exiting on the way up in a ladder strategy. As it goes up, I'll be laddering on the way out as it goes to my price targets. So as everybody's getting excited and flooding in at the top of the market, I've already pulled profits. For me, I fund my index universal life policies. I will be max funding them. The reason why I personally do that is because I can borrow again. I like liquidity. I can borrow and I also like tax-free money. Once the money is in there, locked in, I can borrow against it tax-free to buy more assets. So now I've multiplied my money, okay? It also guarantees my principal. I love the risk pyramid, okay? Crypto is up at the stocks at the top of the risk pyramid. I pull profits from the top of the risk pyramid. I bring it down to the bottom, which is insurance. Just go look up how much insurance banks hold. And, you know, it's not just insuring. It's not like, you know, just insuring your life. You also want to insure your wealth as well. I also own equity in companies. Companies are some of the greatest ways uh, to build wealth, right? Because if you can solve massive problems for people in humanity and you can add value, money is just a value exchange. That's all it is. So with companies, as I gain more income and more wealth, I invest back into cryptocurrency. I pull from the top. I put it down into the bottom of the risk pyramid. I borrow from my assets tax-free, and then I put it back into the ecosystem. I only buy liabilities. So if you ever see me driving a nice car or anything like that, it's bought for by an asset. I'll never buy a liability unless it's bought for an asset. Very simple, okay? The 50% that I'm holding long-term, okay? So what I'm going to be doing with that is once everything settles, once the market settles after 2026 and we get into regulation and normalization, is what I'll do is I will stake in, for interest income a portion of my portfolio to make free money. Then I will also take a portion of that and I will collateralize it to get tax-free money once again. And I'll use that to buy more assets, cash generating assets, and I'll put it back into the left side of the risk pyramid. As it goes up, I'll pull profits. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm pulling profits and I'm just creating this ecosystem. And that's basically what I'm doing. So that's what made me the richest man in the world. And I'm talking about my spirituality, right? And here, it all starts here and here. That's what's made me, I believe, rich. And then it will make my family, me wealthy. And then my family wealthy is because I just understand how money moves to the system. Okay, I went from completely broke on my parents' couch to studying at a very deep level, understanding how money moves to the system. I went from broke on my parents' couch to no longer broke on my parents' couch to doing pretty well financially. And to now teaching and educating other people to do the same thing, to include my kids, the next generation. So we can all do this, guys. It's nothing too, like, I just want to kind of demystify all this stuff. Like, you know, it's not that complicated. It really is not that complicated. There is no invisible enemy. It's you guys. It's us. We're fighting against our own selves. You are enough, right? But we can always do more. We're enough. We're aiming for perfection, knowing it's not possible. God is so real. God is so real. God loves you right where you are. Jesus Christ. Christ is king all the time. There's no savior coming out of the sky to save you. Christ has always been here. That's what I mean by the richest man in the world. My heart is full with God. I have a relationship with God. I pray every single night. I pray over every single meal. I pray every single day. I communicate with God on a daily basis. I'm traveling with my son right now. We're communicating with God on a daily basis. We don't have to go to a building to do that. We do it every single day and every single moment because God is all things. As my son said, he said, God is in a blade of grass. In my house, we believe in God. And I believe in you. And you are enough. But we can always do more. And what I mean by that is taking the special skill that God gave us, which is the ability to think, the ability to act, and the ability to control our emotions. And most of all, he capped that off with free will. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. Down below, you can download Merlin 30 days for free. You can try it before you buy it. You can also, if the relationship doesn't work, you just hit cancel right on the app. Also, you can down, uh, download my free book, set up a free consultation. Or if you want to jump right in our academy, we'd love to have you on board. Warriors! Rise, get your shit together. Let's go. Love you guys.